This video and channel is for adult collectors only. Before we get into the video, make sure y'all hit that like button, subscribe if you're new. I mean, come on, what are you doing? If you're not subbed to me by now, my content is fire from stop motions, news videos, reviews, music occasionally. All my social media accounts are linked down below. And now, let's get straight to it. Okay, hello and welcome to the stop motion review on the legendary Armada Megatron, this time coming in from the Legacy Evolution line as a leader class, making its way into 2023. I'm so hyped. This figure, he has great colors going for him. Typical Armada Megatron. The details are on point. The paint, there's no real issues on him. The sculpted details are loaded on this guy. They really use the leader budget on the paint and the sculpted details, that's for sure. Um, he's solid. The asymmetrical details are dope. The head hides pretty decently, I'd say. Just an all-around solid-looking tank, and I just love the details. I do want to note, though, right out of box, the horns on his head, you can see here in this picture, came out warped. They were even worse beforehand, um, but I heated them up and did some hot water, cold water trick. And it worked a little bit, but it kind of went back to the warped look. Um, so if you get it out of the packaging and the horns are warped, don't be surprised. Now the turret does rotate, but it stops in this direction on, I guess you could say, the left side. And then when you turn it to the right side, it only stops at 90 degrees. I don't know what is withholding the turret from rotating the full 360. It's kind of annoying, especially when you get him into robot mode and you do that whole battle mode with him and you want to rotate the thing for like stop motions or whatever and you can't rotate it all the way. It's kind of annoying, so ugh. But the cannon itself does rotate down a little bit, which is really cool. You don't get that too often on Hasbro Transformers, and it does move up quite a bit too, which is awesome. Now the tip of the cannon can rotate due to a feature of the tip popping off and being able to tab it into the robot mode hand which I'll show off later on when we talk about robot mode. Now for his orange twin missiles of destruction and death, they can flip up a full 90 degrees. They untab there. It's a pretty tight tab by the way. And you can rotate it on this 7mm joint, 8mm joint, uh, which is pretty cool too and it is removable. Which, I don't know why it's removable, because the ports are bigger than everything else on them. So, I don't know, maybe it's for a feature later on with Tidal Wave or something, I don't know, but it is an option you can do. And would you look at that hole? Pause. You can plug blast effects up in there. That looks pretty cool. And for the twin orange missiles, you can also plug them up in there for some pew 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 abling abilities, which is always nice. Now let me take you through a little bit of an idea here. You may be wondering, what the heck is this knife I'm showing you? Well, it comes with the Revenge of the Fallen Voyager class bludgeon. Um, I was looking for a knife to give this Megatron figure because I felt like he sorely needed an extra accessory for him to hold. He's just begging to hold something with the way those hands are sculpted. Uh, looks pretty good when he's holding it. I'll show it off later in robot mode. For storage in vehicle mode, I found this little compartment in between the treads there that you could just, uh, slide up in there. It's a little bit loose, but it does kind of work. And you got that little reference there because I believe in the original toy, it came out of that part of the tank if I'm remembering things correctly but yeah there's an option for a knife if you want to do it. Flipping the Chonk Master around you can see that there are four wheels that are actually pinned in by the way so using that leader class budget again you can make them roll and due to them being actually pinned in they do roll pretty smoothly depending on what surface you're using so which is always nice to see. Now for some weaponizer ports slash minicon ports in the future Hasbro <laughs> when are you gonna do those minicons? Anyway, you got some on the side there, a few up top. There's also a three mil a three millimeter port there. I don't know what that's going to be used for, but there's a couple on the other side, and then there are some on the back where you could use it as like jet boosters for the tank. I don't know. And then in robot mode, they could be like rocket boosters if you want to make a Megatron fly. I don't know. It's an option. Size comparisons. Legacy Outshot and Armada Optimus together with Megatron. It looks so beautiful. The nostalgia is hitting. Can't wait for more Legacy Armada updates. I know we got some coming next year and maybe even later on this year. We don't 
don't know. And then here is with Starscream in the original hoist figure, because I still think that figure holds up if they want to do a new one, but this one still holds up well. Uh, but anyway, there he is with those. And comparing the tank mode with his cartoon model, you can see a lot of similarities. You know, they do take a couple liberties with the details because they did take out some of the gimmicks up front, and that's just how Generations is with most designs anyway. Um, <laughs> they even got right the kibble placement and how he transforms, but I know the cartoon model is based off the toy model, but it's still funny to look at. And then compared with the original toy, again, a lot of similarities, a couple differences due to them not putting in the gimmicks for this figure. Uh, no missiles, no minicons which hopefully we get a core class leader one at some point giving you ideas Hasbro um, but yeah pretty cool to do the comparison and I can't believe we have a new Armada Megatron in leader class you don't count And hey, would you look at my boy in robot mode looking stellar. Got a few issues with the robot mode, but other than that, it is just beautiful to look at. Look at those big meaty shoulders, the asymmetrical detail on his chest, the silver paint, the purple plastic, the green, the paint that's everywhere, the gunmetal paint, the orange highlights. It is just spectacular to look at how the sculpted details just hit the lighting when you get it just right, which I do hit in this clip here, as you can see. And you got the pickles at the bottom. There's even details on the inside of the feet there, which is insane. They really went ham on the sculpted details, as you can see. It's just fantastic. Taking a look at that sculpt, yeah, the expression is a little bland and it's missing a couple paint apps from the show. But other than that, it is just well done. There's no paint issues. I love the metallic blue on top of his helmet. The horns look great, other than them being warped still a little bit. My major issue with this figure, other than him not coming with many accessories, is the shoulders. The way they're engineered. I'm sure you've already heard people talking about it online already, but I'm going to give you guys my thoughts on this, and I do not like it at all. You cannot move the arms back at all, and it hinders a lot of poses than you may think when you're just looking at stuff online you're like eh, it's not that big of a deal but when you get it in hand and you start posing them around especially when you do stop motions and photography and you like to pose your figures like I do this thing limits a lot of movement the way they engineer the shoulders I do not like it I wish they just stuck with rotating the treads while also giving the option of that inside joint with the shoulders like they did here let's just take a few more seconds or whatever to appreciate the asymmetrical details on these arms would you look at that even the hands are sculpted differently the forearms the upper arms are sculpted differently it just looks great so accurate to the show model in the original toy but i'm not digging that hollowness i wish they did a joint there to cover that up or something on a 60 dollars liter class it's already lacking in accessories i wish that wasn't hollow there and to show off my little knife idea you plug it into this hand you can do either hand obviously but i just like it in this hand i don't know why maybe because i want to balance out him holding the knife and then the big turret on the other side but it does look pretty nice when you have them holding it i don't know I just, I just think it completes the look a bit better and gives them something to hold it just looks cool to me flipping the cannon around to his mid midsection to give him that classic look that just makes him so much more menacing and badass looking it's just great to see this um you can see here when i'm posing him in pictures no shoulder backwards movement does kind of look weird in certain poses when you're putting him in action shots or what have you so there's that but other than that this is pretty awesome to show off the feature of giving him a gun arm you just rotate the hand in that cavity and you untab the tip and you plug it up in that port right there and there you go you got this shockwave arm nozzle cannon thing which is okay 
Uh, I would have preferred, I don't know, him to actually come with his knife or something, or a Requiem blaster that doesn't have to transform or just something a little extra, but this is okay, I guess. Now to do the whole turret in front of his midsection look, you gotta rotate the waist joint up, which is really tight, untab that, flip it around, and there you go. You got this look going on here, which is pretty funny. I always thought this look was funny looking in the show and in the toy. And it's still weird looking here, but it's pretty cool that you have that option. You could still plug the blast effects up on there, which is nice. And you still can do the whole rotating of all the weapons, which is pretty cool. Again, rotating the turret side to side, you, you got that limitation there, which is pretty odd when you want to animate this mode or maybe even for, for photography if you want to at a certain angle i don't know but it does kind of suck articulation time For the show model comparison, I tried to find an image online for a quick Google search that didn't <laughs> involve me watching the cartoon for however long to find a decent image. Uh, all I could find was this gif, but um, from what I could tell, <laughs> this is pretty accurate, uh, except for, you know, a couple liberties, like I keep saying. And with the original toy man they've come a long way this figure looks way better than new version even though it's it's the same exact design i'm just so glad we have this updated now for size comparisons i'm pulling out all the stops in this video y'all know me i love my 90s 2000s to early 2010s transformers it's my favorite era i grew up for most of this era so first up here here is with hotshot and optimus the obvious comparisons and this is just fantastic to see and here he is holding the dinky star Star Saber that's really just meant for Hotshot, but there he is holding it. And along with Hoist in Armada Starscream, would you look at that? It just keeps looking so beautiful. Now to go totally slag and random, here he is with Leo Convoy and Beast Wars Grimlock. I don't know, I just think these look great together, and I love Beast Wars Grimlock and Leo Convoy. Here he is with Optus Primal and Cheetor. Here he is with some fellow David K era Megatrons, and this is just absolutely awesome. RID 2001 Optimus and Magnus looking great. Love the colors and how they pop. And then with some more David K goodness, Cybertron, Megatron, and Galvatron G1, which if you know, you know, Worlds Collide Comic 2002 Armada and G1, him and Megatron face off. I'm going to be doing maybe a stop motion or some photography with this at some point, so stay tuned. Here he is with animated Prowl and Cybertron Override, Gigatron in Universe 2004 Nemesis Prime, and lastly, my guy Beast Wars Dinobot and the legendary Cybertron Optimus Prime. Our worlds are in danger! Okay, my final thoughts on Leader Class Armada Megatron. I can't wait for the Galvatron repaint. Uh, I really like this figure. I, I like the mold. It's got a couple issues, you know, with the turret not being able to rotate all the way and the shoulders not being able to move back literally at all. But... Other than that, oh, and the lack of accessories, hopefully the Galvatron repaint maybe comes with the Requiem Blaster or maybe his knife, so, just something. But other than those few problems and issues, he turned out really great. The sculpted detail is just eye candy. The paint is beautiful. All around dope, solid figure. Barely any hollowness on him. He's chunky. He just, just great. Uh, if you can find this guy, I know he's showing up at Walmart's recently, and he's starting to ship out online on Hasbro and some comic shops. So if you can find him, get him. If you're an Armada fan, get him. He is a solid leader class. Probably one of the best leaders we've gotten in recent memory. Uh, thank you guys for watching this stop motion review, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.